Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the HD1 programming software because quite a few people asked me to look at that in my um, survey on HD1 video ideas. So if you're one of the people who requested this, thank you for the request and thank you to everyone else who filled it out as well. So I'm going to be going through the entire programming software and showing you how to program everything you can download a code plug online and use that but I recommend what you do is program the radio yourself first so you see how it works and so you're familiar with everything and all the settings that you can change and then if you want to download a code plug and use that instead um, just because it's easier then you can do that afterwards so let's get started I'm gonna go and start at the top here and go down the menu in order so let's go in this one first, setting. And there's not really much in here that I recommend you change. You can set a power on password if you want to, if you just want to stop anyone messing with your radio and transmitting on repeaters without your permission. Battery save mode, I'd probably leave that on 1.4, which is the highest battery save setting. And um, I'd also leave tail eliminate on and make sure that radio kill and radio wake up are unchecked because otherwise someone can send a kill command and a wake up command to your radio and um, what that does is it temporarily disables the radio so you don't really want anyone being able to do that so make sure they're unchecked the next page of settings are key setting this is just for programming the side keys on the radio the two that are below the push to talk button so a short press is when you hit the button once and a long press is where you hold it and there are various things that you can set for this so just set whatever you want I usually set one of them to scan and the other two something like the power switch and then you can set different options for holding them I'll show you the one key because we're going to look at that next so I'll program this to one key one and that to one key two and then in the next page of settings we have all the one key options and this is for if you hold one of the keys down one that you just set the one key options you can program in here what it will do and so you can go into your contacts so this is your priority contacts which we'll see later in the video select one of them um, if we select call 2 that is a private call and then you can select call and so if you if you select that it will send a call to that private call that individual that ID or you can select message and you can select one of these messages which you program here so let's just do an example you might have a message that says on scene and then you could select on scene from here and so if you hold that button it will send the message on scene to the ID that is programmed into this contact the next page is ID setting and this is where you would program your DMR ID this radio actually allows you to have multiple IDs so let me just do an example let's say that's your amateur ID and you can call that amateur right and then you could also have a work ID and let's say you were to use this radio on your works radio system with their permission of course then you could do that and let's say you sometimes lend the radio to a friend so uh, let's say Tom and his amateur ID is 2350001 for example and so you can set different IDs in there and in each channel you can choose which ID it will use so the next page of settings is channel and if you go to here it shows the channels you have programmed in VFOA and VFOB are the frequency mode settings so you can't delete those channels you can delete all the other channels 
just by clicking on the number and then hit delete on your keyboard and so I'm going to program in the repeater that I always use in these example videos 4391625 is the receive frequency and 430.165 is the transmit frequency I recommend you leave the power on low unless you need it higher than that and then you can just turn it up on the radio when you need it higher you can change that in the settings but if you've programmed one of the keys here then you can just hit that key and change it and for digital channels you really need to go into more because there are a lot more options in here that you need to change so I've programmed the frequencies in but I haven't set a name for the channel yet so I'm just going to set that now the next thing to look at is whether it's a repeater or if it's a simplex channel and this is a repeater so we have to click repeat there you need to select the slot that you're going to be using as well and the ID setting for this channel so obviously this is an amateur repeat so you're going to use your amateur ID for this channel and also select the color code for this repeater this radio does use RX group lists if you want it to and it can use custom ones or if you program them in down here you can set ones that apply to many channels and then just choose it in this list but you don't really need to use RX group lists unless you don't want to hear certain groups if you just want to hear all groups then you can click promiscuous and it will hear all groups so you can ignore all this down here because you, if you've got promiscuous on then it just hears everything anyway and I do recommend that you use promiscuous mode because it's much easier and it lets you hear whether someone else is using the time slot you want to use before you talk. The TX authority chooses or decides when your radio is allowed to transmit and I recommend you set this to color code free because you don't really want to be transmitting on top of other people so if, if the color codes in use then it will stop you from transmitting but if it's not in use and even if there's other signals on the channel if they're not DMR then it will ignore them and let you transmit anyway kill code and wake up code these options here allow you to select which private ID is allowed to kill and wake up your radio but uh, since you disabled that earlier on then you don't need to mess with them but if you did enable it and you wanted only a certain ID to have the authority to kill and wake up your radio then you would set that here and the contacts here this is for setting which talk group you're going to talk on on this channel by default so when you hit the push to talk button it will talk on this group or to this user which you select in the list here or you can go into address book and the address book contains many contacts and then you would just put the number in the address book of the contact that you want to talk to but usually you would have this on priority and you would be calling one of your groups that you have programmed in which we haven't done yet there's also the scan add option and all this does is if you're scanning on the radio when you're on channel mode then if you click scan add on that box then it will scan that channel if you remove the tick from that box it won't scan that channel so let's finish programming this repeater I'm gonna copy this channel by clicking on the number and pressing control C and then on number two I'm gonna paste it into there so I'm gonna click on number two and press control V and so that's pasted in there and this is gonna be slot two so I'm gonna put S2 there so we know that it's slot two and I'm gonna go into more and change the slot in here to 2. I'll also show you how to program in an analog repeater so let's just make one up because I don't remember the details for one so let's say 439.5 and the input frequency is going to be 430.5 and it's going to be analog you have to change it to analog here I'm going to set that to low power um, let's say we want to scan that one and you set the bandwidth here 25 kilohertz or 12.5 kilohertz 
and if you want to set a ctcss or dcs here then you can do that so let's just say it might be 88.5 for example and that's that and then we would set the name of this repeater so whatever it is let's just call it analog if you go into more there's not really many more options for analog channels but there's a couple down here and also the timeout timer which stops you from talking for too long vox level which chooses how sensitive the vox is and then over here there is the TX authority option which decides when you're allowed to transmit and I'd leave that one on allow TX which just allows you to transmit at any time if you have a list of frequencies then you can actually import them here and if you have a list of frequencies that you want to export and send to someone else then you can export them here the next page is zone information so nothing actually comes up if you click that but if you right click on it then you can go add and you can add a new zone and so there are various ways of organizing this you might have one zone per repeater or you might have a zone of many repeaters in let's say we had a zone of all the repeaters around London then I could do that and then I would add these three repeaters to the zone and then let's say I was going to add some more channels and then add them to zone 2 which could be all of your work channels for example so there's not really much to talk about in zones so let's go and have a look at radio the next option and this is FM broadcast radio uh, which you can listen to on this radio the only setting I really recommend you change here is set radio DW which is usually stands for dual watch to on and um, then it will watch your channels that you have the normal radio channels while you're listening to FM radio so the next page is contacts and this is quite an important area you've got priority contacts which is all the groups you're going to be talking on talk groups are quite important in DMR because that's how you manage who you're going to be talking to and so you do need to program these in the way you do it is you click on add and then you get group call here so uh, group call is the normal type private call is if you want to call someone privately just to their ID and only their radio will pick it up so leave that on group call and then you make the name for it so I'm going to use the example of local a local call which is usually on talk group 9 and then there are various other talk groups there's far too many for me to go into all of them in this video but I'll do another one and let's say I think that for North America it's usually talk group 2 I think if I'm remembering that correctly but you can look up all the talk groups for your repeater network online anyway and usually they have a page that tells you about which talk groups to use on which slot of the repeater the next page is address book contacts and this is just going to be a, a big long list of all the other amateurs that use DMR the purpose of using this is that on your radio screen when you're talking to someone their name and location will come up so you know who you're talking to and you can download the list online this website here is quite a good one and if you go on to here you can select the HD1 from the list and then you can choose whether you want to download all of them and there, there can only be a hundred thousand in the HD1 and there's 87,000 right now so at some point in the future you're probably gonna have to filter it and you can do that by country by US state by US county or by call sign but at the moment you can just select all of them and then you can go and download it and then you would go back into the programming software you would click import contact and you would find that file which you just downloaded and select that one and it would import them all into here into a big list and then you could write them to the radio 
Now keep in mind that you have to write the contact separately from the rest of the code plug. Normally you would write the code plug just by clicking on this button, but for contacts you have to write them separately here. And that only applies to the address book contacts, not the priority contacts. The priority contacts you just write normally with this button here, and it writes all the rest of the code plug. So the next page of options is Rx group lists. And you don't really need to use this because you can just use promiscuous mode. But if you did want to use this, then this is where you do it. You just click, right click on there, and you can add an Rx group list. And then you can choose which groups you want to hear when you've got that Rx group list on. And then you would assign this group list to a channel. And the last page of options is DMR service encryption. Now obviously you're not going to be using encryption on amateur radio, but if you had some other frequencies you were allowed to use that you wanted to use encryption on, then uh, this is where you do it. I'm not aware of any other radios that the HD1 encryption is compatible with. I did test it with my MD380 and it didn't seem to work with that. But if you had another HD1 you wanted to talk to in encrypted mode, then you could do by setting the keys in here. And then you saw earlier, but I'll show you again on channel information, you would set the encryption right here. You would just tick the box, choose whether it's a normal or enhanced key, and then choose which key it is. And then that's it. That's ready to talk in encrypted mode. To another HD1. So once you've finished programming your entire code plug, then you would go over to here and you would click on write. But if that doesn't work straight away, you might need to go to device, port, and then you might need to select the port of the radio. Now I don't have mine plugged in, so it doesn't show it there. But if you were to have other devices plugged into your computer as well, then it would show all of them here, all the different COM ports, and you'd have to select the correct one for your radio. So you'd select the port, click OK, and then click Write, and it would write all the information to the radio, and you'd be ready to use it. So that was my guide on programming the HD1. Check out the rest of this series playlist on the iLearns HD1 radio, which you should be seeing somewhere on your screen right now. But if you don't, I will put a link to it in the description as well.